Hey, welcome to Elite Athletes TV Quarterback Training. I am Mike Pulaski, and today I am jacked. We are going to review some old footage and look at quarterback passing mechanics. I figured if I'm going to be reviewing guys coming up on the channel, then I should start at home. That's coming up right now. Ready? Hey there, I'm Mike Pulaski. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV Quarterback Training. I'm an 11-year pro, played in the NFL, the CFL, the Arena League, and the XFL, and so I've seen every different type of offense there is out there. I've seen all different styles of passing, all different types of mechanics, uh, and so I want to bring some of that home to you guys, either coaches, players, fans of the game, kind of expand your knowledge on what's going on on the field, on the gridiron when you watch the game. Today, I'm going to talk about passing mechanics. One of the things I hated as a player is when you would have some media type or some you know, former player that would be out there reviewing what you're doing and critiquing everything that you're doing wrong, but they wouldn't look at themselves. And so I am not going to be that guy. I am going to start my critiques of quarterback mechanics on this channel with my own mechanics back in college. Now, I played at Cal in the Pac-10. It was a Pac-10 at that time. And I was the offensive player of the year in my senior year. This was the time in the NFL when Marino and Elway and Montana were in their heyday. And so it was a time of kind of freewheeling quarterbacks, gunslingers, and you're going to see a lot of that in the footage coming up. There's a couple of things when I teach quarterbacks about mechanics that are super important. The most important is being on balance, being on balance and being ready to throw. I'm going to show you that in the footage here today. Uh, and then the other one is being efficient. And so with those two thoughts in mind, Let's take a look at the film and see what we look back back in 1992. Just be glad it's not black and white. So this is my senior year at Cal, and we're playing in the Citrus Bowl versus Clemson. There are some dudes on the field that you're looking at right now. In terms of players, left tackle Troy Ozine was a second-round pick for the Chicago Bears, ended up playing eight years in the league. Right tackle, Todd Stusey was a first-round pick by Minnesota. I think he played 16 or 17 years in the league, was all pro several years. He's an absolute stud. For Clemson, you have Brinston Buckner, who played, I can't tell you how many years in the league, but also played in the NFL. You have Chester McLaughlin, who played a long time, 10, 11 years in the league with the Raiders. You have LaVon Kirkland, who played forever with Pittsburgh. At right guard, we have Eric Malum, who was a stud and ended up getting drafted second round in the NFL. And my center, Steve Gordon, was an NFL draft pick as well, ended up playing, I think, five or six years in the league. We'll talk about receivers in a second, but those are the dudes up front on the offensive line and defensive line. In the backfield, we've got Russell White, nephew of Charles White, was one of the most talented athletes I ever played with at any level. So anyway, stage is set. Now let's take a look at the quarterback. It is yours truly under center there. And we'll take the first drop back. I'll let you see it full speed. One time, take a look at the throwing motion, and then we'll break it down in slow-mo. Drop back, stick it in. Another dude right there, Sean Dawkins. Ended up playing wide receiver in the league, I think, for 13 or 14 years. So some dudes on the field, like I said. Now let's take a look at that pass in slow-mo. So here we go. First things first, coming out from center, this is part of what we taught at Cal. But you see the false step with the left foot to time out routes with Sean on the outside. He was a long strider. And to get away from our left guard, uh, we had had problems with it the year before. The left guard was stepping on my foot. We actually taught that false step. I teach all my quarterbacks now that I train that we don't take that false step. We have a, a preset punch step out there, and so it takes away that extra movement. But So that's the start. You get that false step coming out with the left foot. Then this film is a little soft, but you can see I drop back, catch step, deep step, really deep in terms of that back step. You see a lot of weight going back. Front foot is really cocked and loaded. And here's the other thing that you're about to see. I want you to take a look at where that ball is. That ball should not be down low like that. That was one of my issues as a passer 
is that I would drop that ball. Remember, you want to keep it above that elbow range right there on the chest plate, and I would drop that ball. So here's a look from the back side. Had to double pump at that time, too. Again, I talked about Sean being a long strider. You'll see him coming out of this route. Good job right there, though. Getting on balance, getting high, chest up, pulling with that front arm. You can see that front arm pulling with that front arm and getting that release high. So even from that low position in the back, wide base, still got off an accurate pass. Now, we'll take another look here. I'll tell you right now, I feel bad for this dude because we are wearing him out in this game. But let's take a look at it full speed first. And you're going to see the same thing. It was a big deal to drive. You see the big, long stretch step. That was taut. So getting that big, long reach step coming out. Again, you're going to see that false step as I pull away from center. That left foot. I have the right foot started back so that I can take that left foot false step first and clear that guard. That was the point of it. Did not put it in that preset punch, which is what I teach now, like I said. You see that big, long stretch step, really working for depth, getting away from the line of scrimmage. And catch, catch right here. And again, you're going to see me get long, really wide base. Really wide base right here as I stride and kind of over stride in the front. And as I go forward here, I'll show you why that is. As that ball comes out and comes down low, way back here, in order to time that out with my throw, I have to have a long stride in front or else it's going to throw me off balance. So that long stride in the front, A, they taught back then to step straight at your target. And it used to drive me crazy. I had to off step, which is what we teach now. But they taught you to, th to step directly at your target. And so doing that, trying to ret retain my balance... I took this really long stride, but again, get back to the top, pull through on the shoulder, and throw the accurate ball. Back out to Dawkins. Told you we were killing this guy in this game. All right, let's take a look at the next play. Now here we go, rolling to the left. Good job getting depth. Immediately right now, I got a lot of depth on my retreat coming out. This is a sprint out to the left. We used to call this west was our sprint protection here. But sprinting left, and you see, I see this flash in front of me. I see this guy flash, and I pull up. I'll run that back just a couple frames here. So when I see that flash, I think that our back is going to get beat to the outside. I probably had that corner, but I thought that I, or I felt that our back was going to get beat, and so I pulled up. I had Brian Traegs on the outside. That's the other receiver I'm going to tell you about here in a second. And see where this ball is? Ball is out away from the body. So I had it down low right here. Ball is way low away from the body. And down as I try to stop. No two hands. Here's the other hand over here. No two hands on the ball. So definitely not a thing that you should do with the quarterback right now. And then way away from the body, but I then pat, and I have to pat that ball. Even with the ball down low, I pat it coming out. So pat on the ball to reset it. Now my feet are not square here. I'm falling away from this throw, but I'm still finding a way to get balance where I'm upright and getting torque on this football. And you'll see it comes out and stroke it on the sideline to Brian Treggs. That's a really hard throw to make. One of the things I used to do is practice all the off-balance throws so that I would practice a throw like that several times every day. Because I had that long release and the long strides, getting reps at throwing off-balance in positions that you aren't used to and comfortable with was really important for accuracy. And so literally every day at practice, I would work 10 to 15 minutes or after practice or before practice of just throwing from different body angles, different positions where I could kind of stretch things out, find my balance, find my position to throw because you have to be able to launch from any angle. I love that. I used to love to go no huddle and I could attack it at any time. And so when I had a team on their heels, 
I would strike up the no huddle and get guys going. That is Brian Treggs. He is maybe the greatest outrunner that I have ever seen on film. He got into and out of his outbreak in three steps. It was almost like there was no physics involved when he was running an out route. But you can see, here's the result, that throw. I mean, it's literally from an off-bounce position, perfect throw to the outside, two feet in. And so practicing those off-balance throws really counted. Steve Mariucci was my offensive coordinator, and he used to love to bring trick plays into games. And so in the Citrus Bowl, of course, you call it Citrus Pass. We knew that we were going to wear Clemson out by running the football, but we were going to start off with a passing game because they were going to be looking for that run. Our offense was about 50% pass, 50% run that year. And so we put in the toss was one of our big time plays. We put in the toss pass on this one, the double reverse toss pass, uh, and they had no idea it was coming. So toss, handoff, back. And again, good set, nice and tall. Not pretty by today's standards. But you see, no heel click. Feet don't come together. Just on balance. Short back step. Get set for throw. Uh-oh, there it is. Ball is way down here. That is unacceptable. But it worked back then. So, launch it. Russ ran himself too close to the sideline, and he just couldn't stay in bounds. But excellent play, excellent in terms of execution, and you could see my release back then when I was a college senior. So that was a look at me as a college senior. You could see I had that long release, ball was low. Uh, I had the pat on the ball, had the wide stride to make up for the timing. You know, body parts have to match. And it used to drive me crazy when people would tell me that I had a slow release it would make me nuts. And I would look back at it now and I cringe. I go, oh my goodness, what was that? Uh, and why didn't anybody coach me? I actually asked Steve Mariucci that. I had him on a show later on and I said, why didn't you coach that out of me? And he said, look, you were a 60% passer at a time when 50% was really good. And he said, so if it wasn't broke, I wasn't going to fix it. And that makes sense as a coach um, it doesn't make sense, you know, long-term for the player, you want to have the most efficient release you can, but it takes time to build a release. It takes time to get it right. And it's why it's so important for young players to start, but here's in part why it wasn't fixed either. We're going to take a look at a couple of guys who were legendary at the time. We're going to look at their release real quickly here. So we're going to start with Dan Marino and I'm going to give you a look at his release. Dan Marino at the time was considered the fastest, quickest release going and, and it was quick, but Watch it on film and tell me if it looks as quick as the releases that you see in today's game. You see, first off, ball's way down here. Here's the other hand. So no two hands in the ball. And I, I obviously am not correcting Dan Marino. Dan Marino is a Hall of Famer. He's an absolute stud. So I'm just pointing out the difference between today's game and what was going on back then. These are the guys that I emulated, the quarterbacks that I wanted to be like. And so watching Dan Marino... My, my release didn't look so ridiculous because this is what was going on at the time of the game. Ball's down low, and you can see he rocks it back from that low position and lets it fly. And he had an absolute hammer. Here it is, again, low and lets it fly. Here's one more from Marino, and I love this one. This is textbook what they teach not to do these days. Look at this. He is just back at the back of his drop, and he's got the ball way back here, separated out. And that was a timing thing for him that he would do from time to time where he dropped that arm out and then he would sink it back to his hip. Ball sinks back to his hip right there, pats it, and then comes up from low and he lets it go. And that that's a quick release from that low position. And he was ungodly accurate with the football. Had great eyes, great feet, altogether. But these were the guys that I was emulating as a quarterback. And so when I looked at guys to model, Marino was one of them. Here's the guy that was my guy. Growing up, I was a John Elway guy, period. He was an absolute stud. Loved him. My favorite quarterback. He was unbelievable. Um, and somebody that I emulated, tried to emulate with my throwing style, tried to perform like. And so we'll take a look at his release right now. And you can see where a lot of mine came from. 
So you see John again. Doesn't have two hands on the ball. He's about to pat it. That's where mine came from. So he pats it and has that wide step as well. Ball's way back here. But the thing that made John's arm so strong is his hip rotation and his shoulder torque getting out here, along with a, a really strong front side. Even though it's a long stride, it's a really strong front side. And so those three things put together, obviously with great genetic gifts, are why John could throw the ball like he could. And he would just absolutely stroke it. So here it is again. You see he's about to get long. Ball's down low. It's back. Long stride. And lets it rip. And so you can see in my release where I copied a lot of that. Take a look at one more. And this one's kind of unfair because he's on the run. You naturally get long when you're on the run. But you can see that ball is two hands there, which is nice. But out low and away from the body. Long, but look at those shoulders. I mean, unbelievable in terms of shoulders. Even on the run to the right, he can get that shoulder torque. It's pretty awesome. Boom. The ball's long. It's low. But look at him pull that shoulder out of the way. I mean, that is... Whoa! Look at all that force. That is awesome. And that's why his arm was so strong. He was able to do that and put all that into that football. He was a really, really impressive passer. So after I got done in college and was told my release was wrong about 150 million times, uh, I started working on it. Started working on it in minicamp. I got drafted by the Bucks. Started working on my release in minicamp uh, and kept trying to improve it. It's a gradual process because you've ingrained something. I, I threw 150 passes at least a day in college in practices. In the off season, I would throw three to four times a week and I'd throw 150 to 200 balls when I threw. And so that is hundreds of thousands of footballs over the course of my lifetime with that release, which I ingrained. And so I worked on getting my release up, developed drills, created drills, um, invented new stuff to help me memorize and figure out how to get my release right. And so now we're going to look at my professional days later on. This is 1998, I believe. And so this is six years later. And I'm playing in the Arena Football League with the Albany Firebirds. And I'll show you a couple of dudes here, too, by the way. We'll look at it live once. Drop back. And you can see how that ball is now up and out in a hurry. There's no wasted motion. I'm not overstriding. Step, boom, up and out. We'll run that back again real quick here. So, not too long there. I am still padding the football. Because that was still a thing then. But you see, I'm not too long. And rather than over striding with that front foot, I pick it up and put it down. And it gives me a base that's just a little bit wider than shoulder width. And I'm able to deliver that ball. Doesn't hurt that I've got to do it with my face too. So I'm not really stepping into it. But that guy catching the ball, his name is Michael Baker. Called him the touchdown maker. A good football player. We'll take a look at this next one. Half roll to the right. Again, separate. A little pat on the ball, but quick coming out. This looks a lot more like Marino's throw in that when I come out with that ball, I have it down low. Pat it low. And then it's up and out. So that's quick. That's four frames of video. So four frames of video is an eighth of a second to get that football out. Completed it. That dude right there is touchdown Eddie Brown. He was voted the greatest player in the history of arena football. He has also, if you watch the NFL, Antonio Brown's dad, and you've seen his stuff on Monday night games. And if you see him catching touchdown passes, I was a dude throwing them to him. So let's take a look at one more here. Drop back again, real quick, up and out with that ball. So you can see how much quicker my release is now. And we'll slow this one down. 
hit five, and it's up and out. Again, boom, step in, hit five, still got that pat. It never dropped below that shelf. So as it comes out, you can see up and out in a hurry. Increase that release time, improve the foot position, and I love the graphics. Welcome to the 90s. But you can see how quick that ball comes up and out. Boom. Up and out. And so able to quicken that release. So you can see the difference from my senior year in college up until my pro days later on in my career. It took me two years to break that release. I had thrown 200 balls a day for five years in college trying to develop my skills. And so I really honed that bad release and had it grooved. And to break it took a long time. My second year in camp with the Bucks, I literally wanted to cut my right arm off. My elbow hurt so bad the whole time. But I got through it, got it done, played in the CFL, played in the Arena League, played in the XFL. And that Arena League team went on to win a world championship and got voted the greatest team in the history of arena football. So had a successful career. Um, it was great, great memories from it. But I teach young quarterbacks now to improve their release. I have a whole quarterback training program to help them improve their release and it is set on a six-week schedule to start, but starting with great mechanical foundation and then improving from there and learning the game as you go. But that's why I try to teach them. Super important to me. Probably cost me big time coming out of college, uh, and I don't want that to happen to any other kid. I'd like them to have the best career they can have and have a phenomenal experience playing the position because that's what it's all about. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a lot of this this year reviewing quarterbacks, reviewing teams, reviewing the Pac-12, especially since I'm a broadcaster in the league. And I'll have a lot of it coming up. It's been awesome with you here today. It's been fun going back in the time machine to check out the olden days. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel. There's going to be a lot of football. We're going to break down plays. We're going to look at schemes. We're going to talk about concepts. We're going to do it all. We're going to compare college ball and NFL and Arena League and show you how a lot of the concepts are the same. So subscribe, hit the bell, Give us a thumbs up, please. And any questions, I'd love to answer any questions, especially about mechanics, about offense, about concept. Just please hit us with a question down below in the comment section, and I'll get to your questions. Thanks for watching. It's been fun talking to you about the good old days. And this is Elite Athletes TV, quarterback training. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>